Oh my. What do we have here, boys? Something you don't see every day. It's pretty special. In for sharpening from my buddy Felix. We're going to take a short, adoring look at the Bussy Team Gemini Combat Knife. Stick with me, guys. Hi gang, Rob here. It's the evening of 7 June 2015 and I am counting myself fortunate for having had the opportunity to spend some time with this beauty. From Bussy Knives, they're rather faithful but nicely improved version of the vaunted and famous Randall Model 14 fighting knife. This is the Bussy Team Gemini and it is a chunk. <laughs> it is a hunk of steel. Let's talk about what it is, what it's designed to do, and then we'll get into some technical data and I'll give you my impressions. So what we have here is a soldier's combat knife, field knife, fighting knife, pry bar, log splitter, head splitter, <laughs> uh, and it doesn't come cheap. I don't think uh, most American GI privates and corporals in the trenches are going to be sporting a bussy Team Gemini. Uh, good luck finding one in stock anywhere, but after doing a little quick research, out of stock pricing on a couple websites, uh, in the high 600s, yeah, 680 something dollars to own one of these. I would say you're probably going to be a fairly elite military fighter, maybe a uh, an expensive civilian contractor. If you're carrying one of these babies, and I think you could carry it for a lifetime. What we got here is a gorgeous and functional saber ground drop point blade with a very nice and symmetrical swedge at the tip, not a false edge, just a swedge leaving a nice reinforced tip. Stock thickness of the proprietary INFI, INFI steel by Bussy is one quarter inch. The breadth of this blade, gosh, over an inch and a half got over an inch of saber ground. I gotta measure that. Over an inch of saber ground primary bevel. Let's see. Yeah. About an inch and five eighths. And it, just about an inch and a sixteenth of primary bevel. What that gives us is about a 13 degrees inclusive primary bevel, about six and a half degrees per side. So it's pretty wedgy. Now I have resharpened this. It came extremely obtuse from the factory. It was sharp, but it was very obtuse. Um, it's, it's now ground at the angle. I grind uh, the Benchmade Adamas and other similar knives, which is 18 degrees per side for a secondary bevel with about a 21 degree micro. And when I get into this steel discussion, you, you might think that's a little acute, a little delicate for a brute of a knife like this. But when I get into the steel discussion, I'm going to explain why I think it can take it. So the base of the edge terminates in what looks like a forward finger choil, doesn't it? And I thought, hmm, with a full top and bottom cross guard, is that going to be functional? I mean, really, where's your thumb going to go when you come up here? Well, 
actually the cross guard is thin enough your thumb can kind of pass it or even go over the top of it and frankly it's kind of usable um, this is really not an interference at all I'm kind of impressed by the decision to go with that choil because it does let you come forward for some pretty nice fine work and of course it lets you sharpen the edge properly all the way to the base so seven and seven eighths is the length of that blade of that quarter quarter inch thick infi stock we have a 3d machined deeply hourglassed g10 handle uh, full tank construction not tapered by the way which i find a little interesting but it does certainly uh Although the, the grip is a little odd, it does hang on to the hand in a variety of grips rather well. Interesting how in a variety of grips your knuckles kind of fall into these flares on the stainless steel tubes, which are holding the handle scales on. So it affords a very forward grip. It affords a set of pretty nice standard grips. If you want to come back on it on this five and a half inch handle and use that pommel with the pinky for some chops pretty effective the handle is just long enough I think certainly not going to turn in the hand under torque pretty cool the machining on the handle scales is uh, a bit reminiscent of the Chris Reeve Niala, but it's a better handle. Got a lanyard hole, and Felix has affixed a paracord lanyard with a pretty cool aluminum bead. Not sure how functional it is. Shall we slip a hand in and see? Well, actually, it's quite functional. If I'm going to be hacking my way through woods, and I'm not going to drop that knife. You get a Put forth some effort to get your hand in and out of that lanyard. Pretty good job, Felix. Now the sheath this knife comes with, came to me with, is a Kydex sheath with a tech lock. And it fits the knife pretty well. It does have a little rattle to it. Interesting how the holes in the cross guard line up with the holes in the sheath, I'm sure on purpose, if you wanted to lash that thing in there for ultimate security. Uh, by the way, this would not be a bussy sheath. The knife comes with no sheath for $680 something dollars. I guess that gives the operator with a lot of money the option to do whatever he wants there. Theoretically, you could use these two holes in the cross guards as well for lashing this 21.3 ounce behemoth onto a shaft to make a spear but I think you'd want to be a world-class shot putter or javelin thrower to be able to get some velocity behind such a spear because it would be a little tip heavy wouldn't it so let's talk about this steel shall we you guys just look at that beauty for a minute while I pull up some data. Pretty interesting stuff. And it is proprietary to Bussy. So, frankly, the chemistry is kind of a secret. The best research I can do tells me it looks something like this. Half a percent carbon, 0.36% vanadium, eight and a quarter percent chromium, 1.3% molybdenum, 0.95% cobalt, hmm, 0.11% nitrogen, 0.74% nickel, and some trace amounts of manganese phosphorus sulfur and silicon well that's like nothing i've ever seen guys frankly they harden this stuff to 58 to 60 rockwell with only 0.5 percent carbon 
Uh, it only has eight and three quarters percent chromium, which falls far below the threshold of stainless. But I had to do a considerable amount of work to this edge. It was in watery slurry for about an hour and a half, and I was watching it pretty close, but not a hint of a spot or a stain. And according to Bussy's website, it's been this steel has been widely tested in rainforest and salty environments, and it doesn't have a rust problem. Kind of interesting. There's something about the presence of nitrogen that seems to work wonders with an otherwise sort of pedestrian chemistry. Not only does it have corrosion resistance beyond what its chart would, would indicate, it also, according to Bussy's website, and we got to be careful about this because Bussy is the, well, is listed as the maker of the steel. <coughs> and they're the only ones who sell it that I know of. They say it is extremely tough, has excellent spring properties. In fact, they have bent a knife like this 35 degrees in a vise and released it and it returned to true. Uh, which they say is an unbelievable and unprecedented result for a homogeneously hardened steel, meaning no differential temper. It's 58 to 60 behind the edge, it's 58 to 60 at the spine. Uh, most knives, if you would bend them that far, hardened fully to the spine, would just break. Um, so, they make the case, does Bussy, that wear resistance is not a, a property they were looking for in this steel because they wanted it to be resharpenable. Hmm. Do you know anyone who advocates something like that? They say that most damage to the cutting edges of knives is done by impacts or sideways stresses that chip or fracture the steel. Hmm. That wear is not what causes an edge to go away. Damage is. Huh. This is a position that I concur with. So what they find is, because of its unbelievable toughness, both to impact and sideways stresses, it resists chipping and you know fracturing out from sideways stress. Damage to the edge is very, very minimal. And resharpening can be done quickly in the field on about any stone you like, fine ceramic rod, just by a stropping action. So backing away from the cutting edge, straightening out whatever bent areas there are in the cutting edge. And they say the knife will have a long lifetime without thickening because it resharpens without having to remove a lot of material. Hmm. Well, I'd say for $687, they better be telling the truth, huh? I can tell you this, um, not only did I experience sharpening this knife, very, very nice corrosion resistance, but it takes a nice polish, and usually nice polish equals extremely keen cutting edge. <clears throat> Let's see if that be the case. It's very hard to cut paper with a 21 ounce, almost eight inch knife in front of a tiny camera. But um, guys, for a big quarter inch wedge of steel, that is making some really sweet cuts. Um, golly. If some combination of what Bussy says and what I have seen at the sharpening bench translates as advertised to the field, you got yourself one heck of an all-purpose field knife steel here and a design that, well, let's face it, the blade is Randall Model 14, blade and handle, really. The design of this blade is time tested and field honored man I'm telling you guys one edge 
and we should be able to use this rather acute geometry much more acute than you can put on most K bars because of their thickness through the belly and the tip it should be able to take it still be a fairly wicked slicer and be able to take the punishment of chopping and prying without too much deformation no chipping where's the balance point on this guy because you know it's going to be used in a variety of ways what I found is that it's kind of hard to demonstrate but it's sort of right in between the choils it's very hard to demonstrate because it's on the chamfer the the down slope of the of the handle scale balance points right here so if you're gripping back on it it's going to be a great chopper very front heavy if you're forward on it it's going to be very lively because now it, now it becomes a handle heavy or butt heavy knife pretty cool uh, is it a great all-purpose combat and field knife i think it is let's take a look at the fit and finish after i wipe You're going to notice as we sort of do a, a quick macro pan in the rather beautifully done satin grind, there are some scrapes and scratches that appear to be sheath wear. And as we said, this Infi is not going to be super wear resistant. So this handsome out of the box appearance is probably not going to last too long. <clears throat> but it sure is nice to have it here while it lasts, huh? Just a very nicely done satin grind. Here's another one of those sheath scrapes. Now we've come after sharpening to a tip that is still pretty doggone robust. But it will be suited to some more fine work than it was out of the box. Take a look at the grind on the spine. Just really nicely done. Up and over the cross guard. Just beautiful. What a finely, finely crafted piece of cutlery. I want to give you a couple comparisons for size. <clears throat> First of all, let's uh, set it next to the Buck 119 Special. <laughs> you know, in, in the movies, this knife looks awfully large and menacing, doesn't it? Well, not here sitting next to the Team Gemini. And now let's take a look at... My beloved Puma Cougar. Let's get the special out of here. About the same handle length. The blade on the Team Gemini is, oh, what, almost an inch longer? And of course, in breadth, it's not even close. It's kind of look this way. Although, stock thickness is the same. Just thought you guys would like to see that. I'm very interested to kind of get Felix's experience as he uses this knife with this Infi Steel because. It is represented by Bussy to be something pretty special. Um, superb edge retention, toughness, durability, uh, resistance to lateral damage because of its great springing properties, rust resistance beyond its chemistry, and ease of sharpenability. And I gotta concur. Uh, I had to remove a lot of material mm -hmm. to take this edge geometry to a place I thought it was optimal. And it didn't take me that long, and it sure came to a nice polish. 
Felix sends me some of the strangest stuff, guys. And sometimes he really makes me work for it. But uh, this knife was kind of a pleasure to work on. So Felix, you enjoy this thing. It'll be on its way home tomorrow. And I hope you get chances to use it as it was intended quite frequently. That's all for tonight, my friends. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word and Felix's bussy team Gemini are sharp. <laughs>